everyone. In this video, I'm going to be going over set builder notation and interval notation. Let's start with set builder notation. This is an example of set builder notation. If you look very carefully, you can see that set builder notation will always have curly brackets. Then curly brackets on either end. Then we state our variable. So they'll often use X, but if they say otherwise, it could be anything. So remember, the variable is a placeholder. So in this case, it's x. So this is our variable. Then we always put these two dots over here, this little colon, right? And then you're going to explain exactly what set you're referring to. So we're going to say that our variables in the set, so x is greater than, so we read it this way, greater than or equal to 5. And x is an element of natural numbers. Now, it sounds very complicated, guys, but remember, x is an element of, if you didn't watch my previous video, x is an element of means x is a member of. So what I'm saying is my variable, x in this case, is a member of, an, of natural numbers. But I'm breaking the set down further. I'm saying it's not all the natural numbers. Remember, natural numbers start from 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. But I'm saying... X is an element of natural numbers, so they belong to the natural numbers, but I'm only considering numbers that are greater than or equal to 5. So, for example, my set would start like 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. I do not give an endpoint to my set, so we would say that it goes to infinity, positive infinity. That's set builder notation. Let's look at another example. Here I'm considering integers, so we know what integers are, those are the positive and negative numbers. Integers between negative 3 and 2, so starting at negative 3 on the negative end of our number line, going up to 2, and then read carefully, it says excluding negative 3, but including 2. So we exclude the negative 3, so if you can see on my number line, negative 3 isn't colored in over there with a little dot, but negative 2 is. So it essentially starts at negative 2 because we exclude negative 3, then we go negative 1, then we go 0, and then we go 2 because it includes 2. That's the number line. If I were to do the set builder notation, you can see it over here. Again, my variable's x, then x, if you read it this way, x is greater than but not equal to negative 3. So basically, our set does not include negative 3. And it says there, excluding negative 3. So do you see here how we have no equal sign? Then x is smaller than or equal to 2. Because remember, x must be between 2 and negative 3. So x can be smaller than 2, but it can also be equal to 2. Because it says here, including 2. Think about it in terms of the number line. Then we do a semicolon like this. And we just end off by telling the number system. We say that x is an integer, x is an element of integers. So x is a member of or an object of that number system, that set of numbers, that subset of real numbers. Let's do another example. In my next example, I'm going to do write the set builder notation of integers less than five. So guys, what we do is we start with our curly brackets. I'm going to say that my variable is x. We use our semicolons. Now be careful, integers less than five. So x must be less than five. Remember, read it like this. x must be smaller than less than five. Do you see that in the question, it doesn't say equal to or equal to. So there's no equal sign here with the symbol. And then we do our semicolon. X is an element of, so it's a member of essentially, integers. And we draw our symbol for integers and we close our curly bracket. Our next example, integers between negative 5 and 2. So if you think of the number line like this, remember, zero is over here, then we've got 1, then we've got 2. Over here we've got negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Ooh, I'm going to run out of space, negative 4 and negative 5. We're saying that the integers are between negative 5 and 2, excluding negative 5. So if I were to do this on a number line, I would say I would put a colored in dot here by negative 4, then negative 3, then negative 2, then negative 1, 
you guys can see where I'm going with this, then zero, then one, then two, excluding negative five. So how do I do the set build and rotation of this? Curly brackets. That is a horrible example for curly bracket, but I mean, as long as it looks sort of like a curly bracket, then we're going to go X. Then we're going to colon. Now, X is between two numbers. So we need to put X between two numbers. So X goes in the middle. Which number is smaller? Negative five or two? Negative five is smaller. So negative five goes there, two goes there. Now you need to think about your symbols. X, let's read it this way. We need to read it from this way, from right to left now. X is greater than negative five. But you see that I don't put an equal sign here. The reason why is because it excludes negative five. Then I read this way when it comes to the two. X is smaller than but equal to two. Because remember, it includes two. So what I'm saying with this little symbol over here is that X can equal two or it can be smaller than two, which we've said here with our dark dots. Then we do our semicolon and we say X is an element of integers and we close our curly bracket on the other side. Let's do one example, one more example. Real numbers greater than or including four. So curly brackets like that. Then we go X, our variable, colon, we go X is greater than or equal to, do you see it says or including four. That's it. Semicolon X is an element of, now be careful, X is an element of real numbers. So we use our R. You need to know your symbols. And then you close your curly brackets. That is set build notation. And that's it. In the next video, we'll be covering interval notation.